been involved in Penrith Remembers from the beginning because of my connections with uh, the theatre and with U3A. For me it was always important that it wasn't just about the war, but about the impact of um, the war on the people that lived and worked here and tried to carry on living and working here. I've always had an interest in the First World War ever since I was a young boy. I was asked to be involved with Penrith Remembers um, basically because I'd written uh, several books on uh, local mil military history, uh, one in particular about the Lonsdale Battalion. This is St Michael's Church on the Lowther Estate. The colours of the Lonsdale Battalion were hung here in 1922. That's the famous or infamous uh, poster that was put up um, for re the recruits to the uh, Lonsdale Battalion by Lord Lonsdale. Are you a man or are you a mouse? They were very controversial, an awful lot were ripped down. A lot of people were very upset uh, really about the tone of the poster. This is um, Joseph Wood. He's on the memorial here in the church. He was in the Lonsdale Battalion. He was killed in February of 1916, 24 years old. He actually worked in the Lowther estate offices, no more than a quarter of a mile from here. I was privileged to meet the last surviving member of the Lonsdale Battalion. Uh, a chap called Fred Francis from Carlisle. And there's an awful lot more interest now in the First World War than there ever was. These men who, who came back were neglected for a lot of years and, and forgotten about. Um, but, you know, that, that's been put right now. My particular interest is the research side of it. It all started when I saw the Cumberland News online the Cumbrian Library Service had initiated a project to try and record online all the newspapers during the period of the First World War. I started in March 2013 and it took me till July 2014 to complete the task. I looked up any references to any soldier, didn't matter what he was doing, and my subsequent spreadsheet from the Penrith Observer was 4,300 names long. Approximately 1,400 of them were from Penrith or its immediate district. The rest were from the Eden Valley. Once you get an advance or a major battle, then you obviously start to get a lot more deaths. And here we are, uh, a typical one, local war notes in August 1918, the Roll of Honour. And on the third one down, I just choose that, Gunner W.F. Parkins, Royal Field Artillery, son of Mr. Blenkinship of Sandgate Penrith, has been gassed and is in an Edinburgh hospital. But also you've got the lighter side, the fact that, you know, a soldier would get married. Um, one of the nicest ones was in the local uh, VAD hospital, the auxiliary hospital that Penrith was the second largest in Cumbria. You know. um, one of the nurses married one of the patients in 1918 and went off to live in Yorkshire. I thought that was rather a nice tale. All the newspapers are now online under the Cumberland Library heading local history. If people have an ancestor from Cumberland or Westmoreland or the Furness district of uh, Lancashire, what we now call Cumbria, they can go on any of the newspapers and look up and they find then the date of the newspaper, the page and the column. It saves hours of trawling through newspapers that people literally had to do prior to this. I suppose it's a way of bringing families together, thinking about your family history and I suppose as you get older your family history gets more important to you. So many people do have memories. I mean, I, I don't come from here, but my great uncle died in the First World War, and I know that had a great impact on my grandmother and her family. When it was first discussed, it was seen as a year project, but in a way, Penrith can carry on remembering it. Perhaps what we've done is sown the seeds of something that could continue if there's the, the will for it. Um, we will have to see.